Okay, hi, welcome back. I'm sorry I had to skip to the next lecture because it was getting a bit long. I think this initial one is going to be uh, quite long um, as I should introduce you all the elements to substance. Um, I think going forward, we'll probably just click through a lot of the, a lot of the introductory stuff really quickly so they won't be that long. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so our paint. We've added our paint layer. Now we want to make it dirty chipped this barrel's had a life it's rolled along the ground it's been kicked punched filled with liquid and all sorts of stuff by the time it gets to our forest you know it's being used as a fire pit basically um so you know it's had a pretty shocking life up to this point up to that point so we're going to make it look like it's had a shocking life and a, and a sort of wear and tear um so we're going to add our mask so we're quite happy with that color or whatever color you've chosen so add your black masks as it masks it out and what we're going to do now is we're going to add a generator and what a generator will do is create um, a mask or maps um, using the uh, texture set we baked on at the start so you know substance knows it looks at this object it knows it's you know the position the thickness it's got curvature, ambient occlusion, it knows all that information. It uses that information to add details. Like, you know, if I wanted to put a dirt layer just in the creases, it would know that because ambient occlusion. You know, and it knows where the curves are. So it's, it's quite clever in that respect, really clever. Um, so if we click on our fill layer here, right click, add a generator, click on that. No, it won't do anything to start with um, because we haven't told it what to do. So over here where it says generator, we need to click on that and we want to choose a generator to put onto them. We're going to choose our metal edge wear. So click on that and you'll see metal edge wear is coming through, but it's actually the wrong way around. We want so what we need to do is go on to our click right click on our mask and click on invert mask like that and straight away you can see we've got some wear and tear it's added a, it's added a levels here so we can adjust the levels of this to coming through i think if we go back down to our steel and change our steel color i want this to be actually dark I want this to show through a bit more so just increase the brightness of it slightly yeah that's better and now we click on our metal edge wear generator here and we've got a lot of values and now really it's down to you and down to how much wear and tear you want to give this bow in terms of just the paint layer you know what do you want to give to it what you know to start messing with the so we've got wear level you know we can take it right back so it's got none or we can take it right up and it's got loads you know so it's kind of where do you want this where what looks right you know based on the age of your bow and i would say that's pretty that's pretty cool that's exposed a lot of the metal um you know and wear contrast we can really bring it out a lot more i like the contrast so you just bring it and just have it where you where you want it you know you, these are these are just just play with these until you're really happy with the sliders and it's doing what you want it to do um let's see use try and just yeah use leave you could put that on so that all but it's giving it a very, it's not a good look. It's too repetitive, try playing a, uh, what if we bring the level down? No, let's turn it off. It was better with it off. It was more random. All right, the grunge amount, so we can increase or decrease that. I think it was pretty good where it was, to be honest. Uh, leave that off 
edge smoothness. So ambient occlusion masking, just leave, just, you don't need to do that. You just, you know, it will turn it on and off basically. So just leave that. Uh, curvature weight, and this will define how much the uh, grunge will appear or not on the curves. And this is using the curvature map that we baked at the start. So you can see how it all works. So if we reduce that, it, you know, if we take it right, right down so there's no weight, you know, it won't put any emphasis on the curves. If we take it up to max, it will really take it off the curve, you know, the peak of the curves. And you know, you want a bit on this, so just pull it down and sort of breaks the edges. That makes it look quite natural. So that's our, that's our uh, metal edge where we've got levels here. So we can really, like I said, we can really influence it more or less. Um, I think I did that with my original one. I think I brought it back so it really pulls, pushes it out a lot more. So we'll just, yeah, now that's cool. We can take it down that way. Leave that as it is. And there you go. That's that's our paint. It's looking pretty painty. And now you can see where the metals coming through the steel is more shinier than the paint, which is quite cool. So we go back to our paint layer, back to our paint. You know, click on the paint. Um, we can adjust our um, our roughness. You know make it even more so really emphasize that even more which i quite like because when it moves around in the light you know it makes the paint sort of stand out a lot more because paint you can get metallic paint but this is not this is just your regular paint that's been sprayed onto this object and now it's like that actually i want to go back in and sort of adjust that way actually because it's quite um and this is just the inputs it's using so just just, uh, just take it down a little bit because that was quite a lot there we go that's better yeah we can change our in fact we need to change our projection so if you click on the paint layer uh, change that to try plain art again uh, we need because that will just if there's any seams there, that'll get rid of that. Yeah, so that's our paint layer it's done for now. Um, but it's not very dirty. It's very clean sort of looking. Um, it's a very clean barrel. Um, so we might want to add some dirt onto that. So let's add another fill layer at the top here you can see where this is going it's layer after layer and then and then sort of adding sort of elements to modify the layer um, and we just gradually build it up and build it up um, okay so now this is going to be our dirt layer so we need to change it actually we need to change this to paint change our name for each layer so we've got you know we know what it is so just click on that name and call it paint and this one we're going to call it dirt like that okay and it's white and that's not the color of me you know we don't want our dirt to be that color so we click on this and choose dynamic so we can see it again and choose a dirt color you know, real dark brown, I would say. Quite a dark colour. Yeah, like so. Like that. That's quite cool. And we want to add another mask into our dirt layer. So add a black mask. So that's masked our dirt out. And on the, on the mask, we want to add um, another generator. Like that. And this one... We're gonna add that there. MG Dirt. I'm gonna add that one. And you can see it's using the ambient occlusion to put dirt into the corners, but it's not coming out as much as we thought it would or should, so we need to really push it out. You can see it's working in the corners in there quite well, because there's a lot of ambient occlusion in there. Uh, so that's working quite nicely, but we need to pull it out even more. 
um, and we can do that just by adjusting these layers uh, don't level oh, it's too much so we do want quite a bit of dirt in there see now it's looking dirty see our dirt layer is uh, it's quite shiny we don't want the dirt to be shiny um, so we go back on here and we turn off our rough well actually we don't turn it off let's turn it on and adjust it and pull it down um we find a roughness channel here and we just play with that maybe you want it a bit to come through a little bit perhaps yeah so just play with your values um until you're happy with them really that level contrast so grunge them out scale so this will shrink it down you know the patches of dirt on it will take it right up uh, but you don't want it either you kind of want it somewhere in the middle there where it was was pretty good actually somewhere like that i don't want custom grunge you will use tri plane now because then that'll get rid of if it crosses over any seams um it will just blend it out um edge masking you can see it's sort of it's adjusting if you look at the close in on the edges just to give it a bit more of a finish you know otherwise it's too sharp like that and that you know gives it a bit more of a softer edge if you like you know, so it's collecting my dirt it's using the ambient occlusion for that and you can see it's actually in all the crevices which is quite nice but one thing i noticed when i did my one and i've noticed previously is see the repetition so what we want to do is we want to see, sort of paint into this a little bit and go mm, yeah that's nice but i could probably do a bit better than that um uh, so when we've got our dirt layer here let's add a paint layer so we can add paint uh, effect to this as well so you'll get a paint effect here and then we can paint into this like that see but we're going to, not going to do it like that and we can um, mix this up a little bit <clears throat> so if we come down here see our self our sub our sub shelf brushes down here on our shelf and um, we can choose one of these brushes and I quite like using there's a dirt brush here and because we've got dirt we've got brush selected up here and we've got our brush values down here we can change the size of our brush you know we can make it really big like that paint like that or we can make it really small do really small detail stuff or we can have it in between which is what we're going to do now we can change the flow so if you look at this this is an example you can actually draw in here to just feel what it's going to look like if you change the flow can see it kind of gets a lot more subtle uh, stroke capacity same sort of thing you know all these, these values let you adjust your brush basically direction you can turn it rotate it and that's handy when you've got a, a very specific shape of brush to be able to rotate it around like that um, and you know all the jitter if you if you're familiar with photoshop and paint packages you'll you'll know what all this stuff is um so you know just play with these this really just affects your brush because that's what what we've got selected at the moment and this is what it's going to look like and you can see over here this is the material it's only going to affect the color it's not going to affect any other uh value because we've got they're all switched off on this layer so we can go ahead uh, and we can paint and paint out some of this repetition so we can you know just go and mix it up a little bit and uh, you know I'm going to speed this part of the video up because um, 
what I'm going to be doing is painting more dirt. Make sure you've got this paint layer selected. You've got your brush that you want. Choose a different brush. Try different ones. Crystal gives a different type of effect. You know, maybe you want um, maybe you want a sort of paint spray effect. I'm going to be using that in a minute actually for something else. But um, <clears throat> You know, I like the dirt when you don't just because it's called dirt doesn't you don't have to use it just because we're painting dirt. You don't have to use a dirt. We can use any brush you want. You know, spots if you want to, if you want to paint spots. That doesn't seem to have that much of an effect. Smooth and noisy. Smoky brush. You know, all these have a different, you know, that's what they're there for. Just like in Photoshop, different brushes have a different sort of stroke. So, you know, I quite like the dirt, so I'm going to use my dirt. And I'm just going to paint into my uh, my dirt layer here. Okay, so that's my dirt layer done. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. Got some of the repetition of it out. And what I suggest is when you're doing this kind of work, think about the environment it's going to be in. If you notice, I put a lot of dirt on the bottom because it's going to sit in a forest and, you know, it's going to rain, it's going to get weathered. And, you know, when the rain hits the deck, it's going to bounce up and make my bow more dirty, you know, so you know trying to just make sure the environment that we're going to place it in is sort of on my bow too so we would get a lot of dirt basically in a forest 